episode is brought to you by Alouette. I am so excited to offer a free restorative enzyme peel sample. If you want this, you'll just go to peel sample. Dot com. You guys, this is the one that you put on dry skin. You rub it in a circular motion for about a minute and you heard you're going to see dead skin like visibly right there. Tangible results after a minute. You can use this on your face. You can use it on your calloused hands from that barbell and you can use it on your running feet. So whether you've been running, lifting or momming, this is an awesome product. Again, I want you to go to peel, P E elsample.com and request your free sample. Welcome to the Run Lift Mom podcast, where we're talking about running, lifting, and momming, not necessarily in that order. Friend, did you know daylight savings time is upon us? Oh, that's right. On Sunday, March 14th, we are going to spring forward, and every mom out there knows that this means havoc for their kids' sleep habits. Am I right? (laughs) Hey, my guest, Annie Henderson of Annie's Child Sleep Solutions, is going to provide some tactical tips that you can use in preparation for daylight savings time. She is a certified sleep consultant, and you guys, she has got professional experience as well as her own own personal experience because she's also the mom of Irish twins. So without further ado, Annie Henderson. All right, y'all. So I have got Annie Henderson from Annie's Child Sleep Solutions here. And I just like wanted to make sure I knew her business name. And she said, I'm not doing adults. It's Annie's <laughs> Child. Welcome, Annie, to the Run Lift Mom podcast. Good morning. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, I work with children. I do not work with adults. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are grinding and you're only like sleeping four hours a night and chugging like, you know, 10 coffees a day, Annie cannot help you at all. (laughs) Who can you help, Annie, and how did you get into this? Well, I can help anywhere from newborns to five years old, even older if you're school-age children as having issues. But I got in this purely because I have Irish twins. and Tell us what Irish twins means, because I know. I'm in these circles, but what if folks don't know? So good point. I had two babies within a calendar year of 12 months. So my children are exactly 11 months apart to the day. Are you guys hearing that? (laughs) She had two babies in the course of a calendar year. Yes. That has been one of my greatest achievements, I will say, as a human being to be able to do that. But they gave me the inspiration to become a child sleep consultant. What can we, I mean, daylight savings time, I'm publishing this. So like, y'all, it's coming up. It's coming up in a few days. Help us out, Annie. Like, how can we think about this now? So we've got some maybe actions next week. Okay. So here's a couple of tips to help you survive the transition. First and foremost, do not touch your clock Saturday night. When you wake Mm. up Sunday, Go about your day. Do your workout in the morning. Have your coffee. Then casually go around and change the clocks to the appropriate time. Now, for children who are no longer napping and are in school, here's what you're going to do to help them adjust. You are going to basically split the difference. What do you mean by split the difference? Okay, so what I mean by split the difference is let's say that your child goes to bed at 7 p.m. every night. Okay. So for... You are describing the Goodwin household. This is, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So then March 10th, 11th, and 12th, you're going to put your kids to bed at 7.30 p.m. Ah. This is just like... Y'all, I am not even kidding you. We have talked on this podcast about... If you're trying to prepare for a marathon and get more sleep, you don't necessarily need to go to bed an hour earlier. You just put 30 minutes on each side and extend that as you go to your taper. I can do it with my kids too. Yes. Oh, yes. Keep going. Okay. And then on the fourth night, they're back to their normal bedtime of 7 p.m. Yes. Very easy for well-adjusted sleeping kids. It takes about a week to adjust to the new time. 
Okay, so it's good to know going into it, it's going to take, like, we're going to be in the pain cave Mm -hmm. for about a week. I love that, pain cave. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But splitting the difference is a really good strategic way to do it instead of just saying, boom, now everybody live as if the hour difference. You can ease yourself into it. Absolutely. But that's for children who are not napping. Let's talk about toddlers who are napping. Yes. Okay, so for toddlers ages one and older, on Sunday, the first day of the time change, you would put your child down for their first nap, whether it be one or two naps, depending, 30 minutes later than normal. Okay. So if their normal nap is 1230, I'm putting them down at one. Yes. Okay. If they were, their normal morning nap is 930, you're putting them down at 10 a.m. Okay. So, and this is, is this in conjunction with splitting the difference on bedtime for those kids that are napping? Yes. You hit the okay. nail on the head right there. So we're continued, continuing to do that. You would do the same thing for their afternoon nap if they okay. were on two naps or just for the one nap. Okay. Let them sleep for the allotted time that you want them to sleep for. And then if their bedtime is 7 p.m. normally, it's 7.30. Great. Okay. Great. So you're going to do that for three nights. On the fourth night, everything goes back to normal for bedtime. On the fourth night, you put your child to bed at 7 p.m. On the day after the fourth night, so like the fifth day, all naps are back to their normal time. Like if it's Uh, nine o'clock and two o'clock, you know? Got it. So that's what you would do for toddlers. Great. Wow. So, you know, something that occurs to me as we're talking about this, Annie, is as mothers, right? Like we've got our little routines. If we're a working mom, like we've got our, we've got our routines, <laughs> routines, like it's uncomfortable when they're disrupted. So I just want to say to the listeners, I mean, like <laughs> you're going to need to be flexible for your child's sleep needs. Your Yes, your world is going to get a little bit rocked at daylight savings time. And mom, like I'm going to ask you to put your big girl panties on and just be okay with that. Absolutely. Yeah. The thing with children, though, you kind of always have to be flexible. (laughs) Touche. (laughs) Touche. What are you thinking? You can control everything. Yeah. Yeah, Good point. So this, like all things in motherhood, we have to, we have to be flexible. We have to give them some freedom to develop. Yeah. Because if you're so strict with your routine all the time, I mean, of course, I always advocate for a consistent routine, but if it shifts like 30 minutes here and there, no big deal. Let your shoulders fall below your earlobes. Don't be so stressed out about it because that's not going to be good for you while you're taking care of your kids. Great. Great point and good advice. Um, So just to wrap it up to about the daylight savings time, if you have an infant, so a baby Mm -hmm. that is around six months or older, six months to a year, and they're on multiple naps, so like three naps, uh, what I want you to do is, let's say bedtime is 7 p.m., you're going to move bedtime 15 minutes earlier each night until you reach the normal bedtime, okay? Okay. So the first night, you would put baby down at 7.45 p.m. Okay. Okay? Uh, Then the second night, you would put baby down at 7.30 p.m. Okay. And this is new time, right? This is new time. This is what my clock reads. Right. Okay. So that by the fourth night, baby is back to normal bedtime at 7 p.m. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you would handle an infant. As opposed to splitting the difference with an infant, we're doing this in 15-minute increments. Right, because their awake time is smaller than an older child. Yeah, okay, good. So we've got strategies for that non-napping. We've got strategies for the toddler who naps as well as the infant. Yes, Woo! We can do this. Yes. Annie, I can't. I mean, like, what about you're the sleep guru? Tell the moms out there what they can be doing to create healthy sleep habits for themselves because we know that we can't be the best moms to our children we can be if we are tired and ragged. Absolutely. And that all starts with you need to stop screen time between an hour to two hours before bedtime. This is really important. Stop shopping that Zaya on One Lift Mom. <laughs> I put your new releases out earlier in the day. Stop, stop shopping it. I really cannot say this enough. Blue light 
affects us so much. Even watching The Bachelor on Monday night, we were still getting blue light, Mm -hmm. and that is very disruptive to our sleep. And how it's disruptive is we will come out of a sleep cycle at the latter half of the night, so around 3 or 4 a.m., when melatonin stops producing, and we will be wide awake and unable to Mm. connect sleep cycles more easily. So what about like those, what would you say to somebody that's like, oh, I've got I've got night vision or what, you know, those apps on your phone that supposedly eliminate some of the light. Well, are you calling, are you calling BS on that? A little bit. Yeah, I okay. am. Okay. Uh, if you want healthy sleep habits, if you want a good night of sleep, mm-hmm. just don't do the screen time. Read a book. Yeah. So what about things in our room? Like I'm thinking about like we run a fan that has a little light or like sometimes my computer printer light will be on. Should I be like covering those with electrical tape or something? Is that light going to affect my sleep? No, thankfully not. Those little minuscule lights definitely won't affect your sleep. It's the iPads, the phones, the TVs, all of that. Just get in the habit of turning it off at, you know, 830 Mm -hmm. and doing something else, you know, whether that be journaling for five minutes. Your husband. Oh, 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 (laughs) I hope they don't put an SFW on this for me. (laughs) What? There's no screen there. That is so true. That is so true. (laughs) You know, whatever it is that you didn't accomplish during Mm -hmm. the day, accomplish then. And then you know that you can go to sleep without anything weighing on your mind. Great. So Great. that is definitely the biggest tip I can so, give. So biggest tip. I'm not even going to ask you for more because, guys, cut out the screens before. This has been so much fun. I have to tell the listeners, we had intended to do this over the phone. And then, like, we were just having technical difficulties. So here we sit in your closet. This has actually been a ton of fun. You guys, Annie, like, I just asked her a lot of technical stuff. And she's, like not looking at notes. She's saying this stuff. I can tell it's from the heart. Any like God has you doing what you should be doing. I'm going to put your like information in the show notes because you work with folks all across the country, right? Yeah, actually, I'm actually starting to work with someone in Germany right now. Hey, uh, all across the world. That's awesome. So I'll put your stuff down. Um, remember y'all, if it's working for you, you don't need any. If you know that it's not working for you, get in touch with Annie. (laughs) And I will have a bunch of information on my website too, especially about daylight savings time. Yeah. It's time for the Alouette product of the week. And this week, I'm a talking about beauty sleep. You got to get you some beauty sleep. It is a cream. It is an overnight cooling treatment. And the idea is that you can revive the appearance of your skin by putting this on. As the name would suggest, it is for your evening routine. And if you want to wake up feeling refreshed, regardless of how many hours of sleep your little let you get, you want beauty sleep. I want you to click on details, swipe up. You are going to see the link to beauty sleep as well as the Alouette products in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to the Run, Lift, Mom podcast. I want to let you know that you can swipe up in the podcast player that you're in to see the show notes. That's going to take you to my website and you're going to get a deep dive on today's show. Cool, huh? You can think of it as a blog post that complements what was covered today with all of the links and resources discussed. Don't forget to check out the podcast partners as well with some really great offers for you. And until I get into your earpiece again, remember, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's from 1 Timothy 4.8, and this has been the Run, Lift, Mom podcast. Thank you for listening to Run, Lift.